Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and I talked about in a recent video that I wanted to actually take the time to sit down and define what is S tier, what is A tier, what is F tier, and actually structure it on a proper curve within Raid, and then I'm going to work on going through every single legendary in the game and placing them in these tiers here in another video. So I want to talk about some of the numbers involved behind this and kind of the method that I've settled on. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, currently in the game, there is 220 legendary champions and the average in each faction is 14 or 15. You'll see some factions like the new Sylvan Watchers only has nine legendaries, but then you'll see some of the factions like the Dark Elves that are way up there at 20 legendary champions. There's eight in each row, two, four, six, eight. So you've got eight, 16 plus four is 20 legendaries. I believe the Dark Elves have the most and the Sylvan Watchers have the least. And I believe that Raid Shadow Legends launched with like the upper 70s or so. I want to say it was like 78 legendary champions on launch, somewhere around there, like 75, 80. I remember like my first tier list having like upper 70s or 80 legendaries on there. So that means we are close to approaching tripling the amount of legendary champions in the game. Obviously, if we started with 80, let's just say for easy numbers, 80 times three would be 240, and we've got 220. In the game right now pretty crazy to think that there's 220 legendary champions in raid so then taking those 220 champions and trying to draft a template for a tier list that encompasses all champions in the game there's two different ways to think about doing a tier list like this and you're gonna have different opinions i should probably do a poll on this over on the community tab i love the community polls to see kind of what the majority of people want maybe that would help give me some direction on which direction i should go me personally i kind of like it when tier lists are a little bit more of a bell curve where you've got a little bit more distribution towards the middle and then less on the edges so something like this for a tier list where you've got like your s tier and your f tier and you would start out with not very many champions and you would bulk up during the middle and then kind of do that so that you've got a lot of your exceptions on the edges with most champions kind of falling in the middle but then some people think that a tier list should be evenly distributed among all tiers so you'd have like s through f and instead of having the one that kind of does this you would have one that just kind of like does this and it's just consistent the whole way through you have exactly the same amount of champions in s and a and b and c and d and f and yeah like i said i tend to think that it should lean towards the one up top here because there's going to be a lot more just in general you're going to have a lot more average champions than god tier champions so i think a tier list should reflect that but i can also hear the argument for just making the tiers evenly distributed so i'll probably do a poll or something like i said and see what all of you think but let me know down in the comment section as well and then this is kind of an unexaggerated representation of that where it's not a huge bell curve it's more of like a slight one like that because we've got 20 in the s and the f to kind of be symmetrical and then we've got 35 in the a and the d and then we've got 110 champions here in the middle between b and c and the amount of champions that you would want on the edges would again depend on who you ask some people would say that s and f should only be like 10 and then you would have even more uh in the middle if you only had 10 here in s and f so you can kind of play around with those numbers and mix and match and I, this is kind of what i settled with because i think a top 20 and a bottom 20 kind of makes sense for the s tier and that means it's going to be very very competitive because there's a lot of really good avoid legendaries you, you like and then you've got like champions that are good in and pvp and pve and all of that and then honestly to make proper tier lists you would want to differentiate between like early game mid game end game pve pvp and like to really do it right you should probably make like 12 different tier lists and rate every champion because it, it, there's just so many different ways to build champions based on where you're at in the game and how your account is kind of progressing through the different modes but the problem is like i agree with that sentiment the problem is people just want to be able to pull up a tier list and get an overall opinion so you kind of got to do your best as a content creator to take some consensus and then lay it out just in an overall sense because when i have done a bunch of different tier lists i always get comments like can you please just crunch this into one tier list so i don't have to constantly open up a bunch of different ones and and, and kind of keep tabs on them i just want like one place where i can see an overall sentiment so you're 
you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. But I do agree, it's kind of nice. Like, tier lists are for entertainment and like helping early game and mid game players just kind of get an overall sense. Like, if I pull a Siffy or I pull an Errol or I pull an Altan, what's the general consensus on how excited I should be? And that's usually what people are looking for when they want to pull up a tier list. Because for the people that are competing up in the top, 20 of platinum arena like they don't need an overall tier list they understand that part of the game and they understand the game very deeply they're not going to be pulling up a tier list on youtube most likely to get a general sense of the champions so usually for resources like this you would want to scale how you design them to make sense to the early game and mid game players to help them progress into the end game players like the people that have been playing for a while but then also something I've done in the past is kind of separate the void legendaries into their own tier list and then the non void legendaries into their own tier list because these two are from completely separate parts of the game, completely separate shards. Obviously, you've got your ancients and sacred shards where you can get your non void champions and then you have your void shards where you're going to get your void champions, obviously. And to be a funny little story of when I started playing raid, I had no clue what the different like raid was my first gasha game ever you know like f over four years ago four and a half years ago i had never played a gasha game before i had no idea how they work and i remember seeing uh like, like the first day i was playing raid i pulled up the odds of summoning on the like in-game information tab this thing right here in the portal this little eye i pulled this up and I, i'm right, right now there's two x's going on so it's a little bit thrown off but the normal odds the ancients and the void shards are exactly the same so i was so confused for like a day or two i was like what in the world is the difference between the purple shards and the blue shards they have the exact same odds to get champions what is going on here like am i crazy why are they the exact same shard and then obviously after i played for a couple days i realized oh there's that the affinity system where the void champions come from the void shards okay i got it because when you've never played a game before that has like the element circle thing in a gasha game i had no clue what even the affinities meant until i kind of played for that first day because back when i started playing there was zero content there was just nothing out there i remember when i started playing the game and it popped up the screen to pick my starting champion i was all stressing out like oh i don't want to pick the wrong champion so i went to look online i was like which starting champion should i pick and there was literally nothing like I just had to kind of look at them and go with my gut choice because there was no information. And what I ended up doing was going with Gaelic because my thought process was, well, Gaelic is the face of the app. There's no way they would put a champion as the face of the app. That's trash. And it turns out that's exactly what happened that I picked the wrong starter because back then the meta was to pick either Athel or Kale and I ended up going with Gaelic, which would probably be rated as fourth by most people. But yeah, this is kind of what I'm thinking on my ultimate like wrap up 2023 final version of the year tier list trying to get all of the champions in the game laid out in a nice fancy infographic. This is going to be my starting point that I kind of go with unless some of you can convince me in the comment section that I'm crazy. So we're going with 20 and S and F and then we're going to kind of shade towards the middle. We're going to go 35 and A and D and then we've got this chunk right here in B and C of 55 a piece. So let me know your thoughts on that and if you would structure it differently or if that makes sense to you and everything like that down in the comment section. I appreciate all of you and I will see you soon in the next video and I will get to work on this pretty soon here to try and lay out an infographic of all the champions in the game here in 2023 at least for the legendaries and then I could probably do another one with epics and, and maybe rares but for sure probably legendaries and epics so yeah have a good rest of your weekend and I'll see you soon in the next video peace